I'm putting side by side the Altest 5 and the Altest 33. When I turn these on, you can see certain types of test readings uh, on the Altest 33. Uh, primarily these are uh, the winding test, the dynamic test, insulation to ground, different settings, and then of course power off. If you take a look at the Altest 5, in addition to um, all of the test settings, or all of the uh, buttons here, um, you have an additional row of tests. The top row on both units is identical, so you can perform all the tests you can with the 33 on the Altest 5. However, you get all of the additional tests, including uh, all of the original Altest 4 type tests, which are done a little easier. Um, DC test, which uh, tests different types of DC uh, manual testing routes, and then of course you can communicate just as you can with the Altest 33 to software. Um, this one will save about 700 sets of data, operates a little faster than the Altest 4, is a little easier to use, plus it'll give you pass-fail on the instrument uh, as well this one. So as we go through our um, testing uh, on a couple of motors uh, here in a second. We are going to use the Altest 5. We're going to follow the Altest 3 methodologies. So when I, when I cover this, it'll be everything you can do with the Altest 33. And then we're going to also test some motors with these other tests. So we're going to go ahead and test this motor um, with the uh, Altest 5. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on the unit. And uh, we're going to run the measurements that would normally be done with the uh, Altest 33. So I press OK. What it says is to connect the blue clip to phase 2 and uh, yellow to ground. So I go ahead and find a good ground. And uh, the blue clip, I'll select the lead here. So the next step then is to press uh, OK. And ask if I want to do dissipation factor or capacitance, capacitance test. And um, I will have covered those under a different video. So yes, I do want to do that. So I press OK and I let it run the test for me. Okay, gives me a uh, dissipation factor and a capacitance. Okay, I press OK to continue. Ask if I want to do an insulation resistance test. Now, these tests can be done, um, these tests can be done from up to a thousand feet, and I've done further. So I press OK. Uh, to do the installation of ground tests. I press this, climbs up to over a gig ohm. As soon as I hit that point, I stop. If, if it doesn't hit a gig ohm, uh, hold that for one minute. So I press OK. Now, it asks me to connect the other two leads. Which I do here. So I press uh, OK to continue. That's going to perform the static tests, which I just basically wait. And uh, compared to a much larger machine, smaller machines tend to go much faster on any of the static tests. As you can see, it does not take too long. The next one is a dynamic test. It's going to ask me if I want to do that. That particular test involves turning the shaft. So 
uh, I'm going to select yes and select OK. Now I'm going to turn the rotor and I need to turn it at a relatively constant pace. I don't want to start, I don't want to stop. And as you can see, it's going to flip through each one until it is done. Okay, so when I'm all done, it tells me um, what it thinks. And in this case, it's telling me everything's okay. Now, a really cool part is I don't have to rely on just okays and so on. So the first thing I want to do is save my data. For that, I press okay. And I'm going to, in this case, do a quick save. Press okay. And for this, I'm going to put in an ID. I'm going to call this uh, uh, what's uh, D because I'm a dry sulker, uh, M. Well, I have another one, it's DEM1, so I'm going to press OK to change this to uh, the number. I'm going to call this DEM2. I now click on Next, and it's saved. You can also save this as a reference if I'm going to test more motors of this type, or if I'm going to test this uh, over and over again. So. Once I've done that, I can take a look at my different readings. So if I press OK, I'm now looking at my resistance, a relationship of the stator and rotor, that's these lines here, and it uh, looks evenly balanced. A rotor test, which looks relatively balanced. There might be some casting blades in there, but it's uh, it hasn't crossed that line in the center. My uh, dissipation factor uh, and uh, capacitance. And finally, my insulation resistance test, which was done to one gig ohm at 500 volts. Okay, so those are the basic tests. Now let's go ahead and we are going to return in uh, I'm lazy, so I like to use a shortcut. There we go. Now, what I usually recommend is that uh, regardless of the test you perform is right after, you verify that it's grounded. For a machine of this size, I'm just gonna basically touch ground and make sure that I don't have any power there. Otherwise, it'll cause my um, insulation resistance test to trip. Okay, now we're going to do the uh, demo on the uh, other features, which in this case I will be doing the motor test. So I select that, and I've got a, uh, the option of doing a motor or transformer, because yes, this will do transformers, DC motors, coils, do comparisons, trending, and everything else. So in this case I'm going to do the motor, press OK, does the same thing as the, um, the other measurements, the yellow and the blue. So there I have my uh, setup. Press OK. Dissipation factor and capacitance. Yes. Press OK. Allow it to run. It's doing my dissipation factor and capacitance. Once it's completed, you notice readings are the same. Press OK to continue. Now I do my insulation resistance test. Press OK. Press and hold. Press OK. Now I connect the other two leads. Okay, we're all set up. Now this will test uh, oh, more than a thousand feet from the motor. When you do that, it's usually not recommended to do the dissipation factor capacitance test unless you want to see the entire circuit. So once I'm here, I press uh, OK. And it's going to go ahead and do the other test. I just have to wait.
not, qu not quite as long as paint drying, unless it's a very quick dry paint. It goes very, very rapidly, and within a couple of minutes, I'm going to have a complete idea of the condition of this winding. There I go. It says everything's okay. The reference value as well. Um, so the next thing I want to do, like we talked about before, is save. So I'm going to quick save. And I believe I called this last time uh, DEM2. So I'm going to save it under the same thing. Then remember, click OK. So I got one, two, three. DEM2. next and I am done so now I can go back here now that all the data is saved I can go into um, my edit area and take a look at all of this data as well so first one is resistance I just press OK I can take a look at the raw resistance if I want to verify it this again is the TVS measurement which we're going to cover under a different video and uh, all of my other tests. So let's take a look. Phase angle looks pretty good. Current frequency response looks good. And so on. So with this, uh, this concludes our demonstrations of the Altest 5 uh, for an AC motor. Um, and the next one we're going to cover uh, DC machines. Thank you very much.